A few weeks ago, we unboxed my Fractal Design Define 7 XL computer case. Now this is a case that I'm going to be using to build out my new server that's going to replace my old server. Unfortunately, the case is all we had at the time, but today, we've got the rest of the parts. Alright guys, so here's everything that I've picked out for this server rebuild. So we've got the i7-10700, so this is not a K version, this is just the normal version. I picked this in part because it wasn't going all the way, we weren't going for the 10900. This though will give us 8 cores, 16 threads, which keeps us at the same number of cores and threads as our current configuration but with much more efficiency, we've got a much lower TDP than we currently do, as well as uh, much higher clock rates. So this should be a nice upgrade over what we've been using. It gives us, I think it's 16 PCIe lanes, which is actually perfect for the setup we're gonna to wanna to be running. We're not gonna have a GPU in this server. I've decided that we're just not gonna worry about it, but this thing should handle any transcoding that we wanna do just fine. Um, and it's got enough lanes that it'll support the add-in cards that we're going to need to be able to plug in all the drives. We've got 64 gigabytes of RAM, which is probably overkill, but it's going to make sure that we can run as many applications and such as we want. And if we really need to, we might swap this with the memory that's in my desktop. I think they're about the same. I think they'd be compatible. We've got Gigabyte Z490, the Vision G board. So this will pretty much set us up pretty nice. We've got plenty of M.2 slots for our 970 Evos. We're going to start with one. We'll wind up putting two in it eventually probably. These will be used as our cache drives for Unraid. You know, hopefully you're familiar with Unraid if you're watching this, because this is rather particular to an Unraid build. But uh, this will be used as our primary uh, cache drive and we'll eventually get a second one and they'll work in tandem as our cache drives. We've got an additional four terabyte hard drive. Like I said, we're running out of memory. That's part of why we need to do a rebuild. We need more space, we need more memory, or at least more storage. So we've got four more terabytes we're gonna put in there. Uh, back to our motherboard. Our motherboard, it'll support our RAM. We have enough PCIe slots that we can put in the additional cards we need are HBA cards so that we can support all of our drives. It's got 2.5 gigabit ethernet on it, so that'll work great with the modem that we just picked up, as well as with our desktop, so that should keep us nice and quick. There's probably some other reasons that I got this, but you know, we'll address those in a little bit. Then we've got a 560 watt power supply, which should be plenty. It actually should come out right perfect where we need it to be. So let's get the case up, let's get it opened up, and uh, let's start installing all this stuff. First thing I installed was the power supply. For this, I selected the Fractal Design Ion Plus 560P. This is an 80 plus platinum certified 560 watt fully modular compact ATX power supply. Based on the calculations I did, this should give me just enough power once I have fully built out this system. I will also be able to support any upgrades I do in drives, upgrading from the 4 terabyte hard drives I'm going with right now all the way up to 10 terabyte hard drive spinning at 7200 RPM. With the power supply installed, I moved on to the motherboard. For this, I selected the Gigabyte Z490 Vision G. I selected this board due to its dual M.2 slots, its ability to support two PCIe cards in eight lane configuration, its total support of 128 gigabytes of RAM, and its inclusion of a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. Since I'll be using an Intel 10700, 
I decided to just stick with the stock cooler for now, as I suspect this will provide ample cooling for my needs. Next I installed the RAM modules, and for this I selected the G-Skill Ripjaw 5 series. This is a DDR4-3000 setup that should get me at peak RAM performance for this chip. With the CPU and RAM installed, I next mounted the Samsung 970 EVO M.2 1TB PCIe SSD. This drive will act as my cache storage, allowing me to take full advantage of the 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection that this server will have. With everything mounted on the board, it was then time to get it installed in the case. One feature that I realized that I had overlooked was the inclusion of two USB 3 headers. Unfortunately, this motherboard only came with one, which meant that if I was to include a card reader, it would have to occupy the single USB 3 header that I have available on the board. The inclusion of two USB 3.0 headers would have allowed me to plug in the 3.0 USBs included in the case, as well as the media card reader that I will install later. All right guys, so it's taken quite a bit of work, but I think we've got everything in. We've got our SSDs in, we've got the heat sink on, we've got six SATA cables, thank goodness. I happen to have two more, so we've got six, which is what we need to be able to get everything moved over. We've got our power, we've got our extra power, we've got our CPU. I should have mounted the fan, rotated a little bit, I noticed, so that my power for the fan could actually reach the controller on the back. I'm not sure how we're going to remedy that because once I add any more fans to this case, which I do want to add at least one more, it might just be one more, but I don't have any more headers on the motherboard. So yeah, a little bit of an awkward situation where I'm not entirely sure how we're going to handle that. Let's see here. We've got our new Hard drive is in here, but first we're going to have to get all of our existing stuff in because I don't have any more power or SATA cables or a expansion piece to be able to connect seven SATA devices. So we need to work on getting our expansion. We need to work on getting more power cables, our breakout cable for the expansion card, and uh, we're going to need a lot more of the little of the trays to make sure that we're going to be able to mount all of our hard drives that we are going to have. We've got enough to get started. We've got enough for what we have right now, I believe. Basically what we need to do now is we just need to boot it up, make sure it boots, make sure our BIOS settings are where we want them to be. So we'll probably do that, make sure that all looks good. Uh, tomorrow, we will probably try moving everything. Now this is going to be the risky part. Basically what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to move all the drives into this case um, hook them all up, get them all powered on, get everything reassigned, and then we're going to have to move the old cache disk to our new cache. I don't know what we're going to do with that SSD once it's blank. I still need to figure that out because I don't have enough power and cables to keep it plugged in. And to add the new hard drive, so we're going to have to get everything moved over. We're then going to switch those cables over so that we can get our new drive running and we can start putting stuff on it because we need the space bad. At that point, I'll break down some of how I'm trying to break up my drives, how I'm trying to manage all my data and everything. Um, do some like kind of best practices kind of thing, just kind of what I've been figuring out as I've been going along to both try to keep heat down, try to keep disk spin up to a minimum, but also kind of optimized in a way. That way, you know, things that are spinning up are actually what's being used and you're not spinning up a bunch of disks that aren't necessarily being used for whatever you're working on. Um, hang tight guys, that video should be coming up next where we'll uh, begin all the drives moved in and stuff. 
Anyhow, that'll wrap things up for now. Thanks for coming along, guys. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you got questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll try to get to everybody. And uh, hit that subscribe button if you aren't. You know, we're gonna keep doing fun stuff like this, hopefully. But I'll see you guys next time. So long.